Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Event Tech Live 2021. If you have just joined us, my name is Simon Howard. I'll be guiding you through all the sessions for the following five days. We've had some fantastic presentations this morning. Hope you enjoyed the show so far, but there is plenty more to come. We'd love to see who is taking part in today's session. So if you want to take a cheeky selfie, get yourself on the social media, use the hashtag ETL21. That'll be absolutely fantastic. I'll be keeping my eyes peeled on LinkedIn, Twitter, and all the socials as the week goes on. It'd be great for you guys to get involved and connect. Now, up next for our next session, it's called Using Video Content to Create New Revenue Streams, Increase Audience Engagement, and Build 365 Communities. Again, video popularity has gone mad over the past few months, so really excited for this session. Brought to you today by Humphrey Chen and Sophie Ahmed. Take it away. We're now. So hi, Humphrey. I'm really excited to be with you here today um, at Event Tech Live talking about Clipper. Um, hearing so much around how Clipper can really help with audience engagement and monetizing and structuring your event on demand content and, of course, helping to build communities. So I'm looking forward to uh, discussing more with you. Thanks so much for having me here. So I'm going to kick off like I'm sure lots of people watching this are wondering, like, who are you? Who are Clipper? How did it come about? Where did the idea come from? Yeah, so it's interesting because um, the company is only a year and a half old. And last May, my co-founder, Cindy, uh, shared with me a, a problem that she had. And, and she basically had a video backlog. And I was like, mm, what do you mean by video backlog? And she's like, yeah. I keep missing these meetings that I sign up for. They send me these links. And then over the weekend, I'll spend like all these hours like watching these things. I wish there was something that could actually let me get through this more quickly. And then it led to a light bulb aha moment for me because I was like, whoa, I know how to build this. <laughs> and um, I then reached out to, to Aaron, uh, who ended up being a co-founder and, and, and now and my CTO. And, um, and I asked him initially to help me build a prototype. And he's like, well, why don't we do this for real? And I'm like, that's even better. And so he told me how much money he needed. And uh, here we are. <laughs> that's great. And it's great because you've all worked together before. And it's always so lovely when you've worked together before with people to, to launch a business with them. Um, yeah. So that's great. And I'm <laughs> exactly. And I'm sure there's many benefits to Clipper. Um, but in the world of events, what would you say are the main benefits? I would say that the, the biggest, the, the biggest <laughs> feature uh, is going to be that we make it a lot easier for people to consume video. Um, because, you know, if you, if you think about it, it's really hard to find the moments that matter inside of a video. And, and today it's like, you know, if you, if you think about it, the way that Clipper operates, you know, our operating premise is that not all moments are created equally, nor is each minute equally relevant to everyone. And so we want to make every minute searchable. We want to generate an automated table of contents. And so if only 5% of a video matters to you, we want you to find that as efficiently as possible. And if there's another 5% that you didn't know you need to know, we want to help you to find that as well. And so if you end up um, getting 10% utility out of that video, we view that as mission accomplished because it's 10% more than normal. And it also means that you are able to avoid the other 90%. And so, you know, let's face it, um, right now, re-engagement around video is like a theoretical concept because it's like the last thing someone wants to do is to like play a video of a link that they missed because it, you know, it, it's so painful. And so for us, it's all about making this re-engagement of video as if, as effortless as possible and as efficient as possible as well. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. I mean, I know we're all overwhelmed with content, with videos, and particularly, you know, throughout the last year or so. And it's almost like, where do we begin? You know, where do we even start? So to have that is so interesting. I used to always timestamp it and say to people, hey, watch it from one minute 30 in or something. But this is, you know, the, the better way of doing it. So, uh, you know, and, and video fatigue's real. There was that uh, research recently, wasn't there, from Stanford University around that. So uh, how do you think Clipper can really help reduce that, that video fatigue? 
Yeah, the way we think about it is through a new concept that we, we frame as real-time optional. And what we mean by that is, you know, if you're in a meeting or you're in an event and you're just an attendee or you're uh, someone that doesn't actually impact or change the, the topic or the flow of the conversation, and this applies to everyday meetings, this also applies to sometimes to, to events as well, but it, probably more so to, to everyday meetings, but if you are like not essential in that meeting, then if you have the tools to actually allow you to catch up much more efficiently, that means you should actually focus on spending your time where you as an individual have the greatest impact in the company. And so at that point, just tell the organizer to record it and you'll, 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 you'll get the clipper copy and then you'll you'll watch the things that you need. And so at that point, you can deli be deliberate about just attending the full video experiences where you need to be there. Otherwise, you can be much more efficient about getting what you need when you need uh, in, a, in a purely on-demand manner. And so for us, the way to solve for video fatigue is being much more selective about when you actually need to be in, in person in real time. Um, and, and whereas, uh, when you can actually just get caught up uh, afterwards. And so if you can imagine some of the tools that we're, we're working on as well, letting the organizer know exactly when you re-engaged with the content and which parts you saw and which parts you didn't see. Because like we've all had this happen where someone says, yeah, yeah, send me the copy. And then you know they never watch it, you know? And, and you know, so in this case, like there's actually accountability that can be provided. And if you think about it in the events context, you actually end up getting value added insight around what people really value and what people don't value. And then there's like degrees of re-engagement, whether they bookmark it, whether they share it, whether they um, put it into their own little highlight reel, all these individual signals end up showing like relative importance around um, a specific moment in the video versus other moments. And, and that is like really valuable insight that in the past, you as an organizer would have had to do surveys to try to find out. And now we can actually do it in an inferable and automated way just by their actions are telling you what they like um, as opposed to asking them what they like. And because usually the people who participate end up being a self-selecting audience and you don't end up getting a representative sample. Well, that's so true. I'm thinking back to my days of running events, um, you know, and we would right from the 90s onwards when it was even more manual, but we would spend hours and hours trying to understand, you know, what did they really like? You know, which were the most popular sessions? How many people were in those sessions? You know, did they like the speakers? And you try your best to get them to fill in the surveys and only 10 percent, if you're lucky, fill it in. So to your point, you get you know, self-selected you don't really get a true picture um so i think you know if i was running events now and i was using this it would be amazing because i could actually really understand you know a what were the sessions that were popular you know b now what do i do with that information in terms of you know use that intelligence for next year and translate it into the strategy etc but there's probably a way you can bundle it up as well and monetize it and sell it to your sponsors so I wish I wish I'd had that, but I'm sure most event organisers will be delighted to know that this this is available. Um, and leading on from that, you know, there's a lot of backlog as well, isn't there, with with on demand content that doesn't really get watched, and it's such a shame because there's amazing speakers, amazing content. So, how can Clipper help to structure on demand content, and also how to monetize on demand content? Yeah, so I think the way to do that is to ingest those videos, create video libraries, and make that available to, to your community. Because um, if you were to um, push out that content that had been historically recorded, invite them to these new Clipper you know, video libraries uh, for, for the event organizers, uh, suddenly it becomes a resource that the community can actually re-engage with. And so if you think about it, you know, as you highlighted, people spend so much time and money building this content. And just because it ended didn't mean that the value of the content has completely disappeared. It only has disappeared because it's not accessible. And so the tools that we provide allow it to be much more accessible. It allows for the re-engagement to occur. If you find the specific moments that people care about, they can share that with others. Uh, and it allows for the real, real re-engagement and um, utility to occur. And so um, the way that I think about it is that 
engagement is actually like two thirds of ROI. If they come back, then it means they really value it and they really need it. And if they know they need it and the tools are also available for them to share to other peers that they know, uh, word of mouth, you know, when it's done socially ends up being um, you know, much more scalable. And so these tools really allow um, the, the backlog to get lit up and, and we really view it as a lot of trapped potential. And we wanna unleash that potential and provide as many tools as possible, which is why we end up really listening to the organizers, to the event platforms around, hey, what do we need to build? How do we make it better? Where is their friction? Um, how, can we really, how can we remove that friction? Um, and so in a way, uh, we're very much, you know, very customer obsessed and focused around what people need and really trying to unleash all this recorded video because it, it, it is really underutilized and it's a complete waste. And so people should be getting much more leverage out of it. Um, and so all the tools that we're focused on um, help improve not only the recorded experience, but now we also uh, have services actually to, to engage with live experiences as well. So we've actually, initially everyone was always thinking that Clipper is, oh wow, you guys are like masters of the post event experience, which is like something people didn't even know they needed. Now they all realize that, but then now Clipper also has tools that actually serve in real time uh, through the video player. And, and we, we can talk about that too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's so much in there that I want to ask you about. So I think I'm going to start with this. So um, engagement, as we know, you know, it really is at the heart, as you say, of, of return on investment. And it really is at the heart of making sure you add value to your event. So it's great to hear that you do engagement at the event and post event because, you know, one thing we should have been doing in the events industry years ago, but it took COVID, of course, to accelerate this was this year round 365 community and how you keep the engagement up with your customers and your event audience. So I see that Clipper could be really useful to keep that engagement up year round. And as everyone in the events industry is striving towards the 365 community, how do you see Clipper being able to play a part in sort of not just building it, but also creating monetization and new revenue streams? Yeah, so I think for us, um, when, when we index the content, we're enriching it, um, it's always on. And when it's always on, it means anybody can search through it, anyone can interact with it. It's much, much more engageable. And that's actually how communities grow. When people are engaging on the content, when they see people reacting to a specific moment inside of a video, when they see someone doing a heart, someone doing an aha, and someone commenting on it, that's how you actually can continue the conversation seamlessly from, from the past. If you think about it today, YouTube or Vimeo, all of those players have comments, but it's a comment on the whole video, not on a specific moment on the video itself. And so, really for us um, making it 365 means that the conversation that begins uh, synchronously can actually seamlessly continue asynchronously um, and so you know that's how we actually envision uh, powering it and, and making it happen um, and and over time we're going to integrate even more deeply into the social networks so that we can actually leverage their platforms for uh, accelerated network effects like, like as an example imagine if you're um, attending an event and the person is speaking and that person ends up claiming their speaker profile on, on Clipper, well, if someone reacts to that moment and that session, we could notify them on LinkedIn that that happened. And so suddenly it, it actually has a second life afterwards and then it actually can expand back out into the social networks. Whereas right now, you know, when it's someone reacts in in a in an audience or in a zoom it's just very local it doesn't like get broadcasted and so these are the kinds of things that we're, we're really kind of thinking about like how to like accelerate that network effect and you know we have to be we're very mindful too about like private content versus public content on the public content it's a lot easier to do that uh so the, the nuances around the security models to deal with privacy and, and public are both that we have to deal with, which is why a lot of the things that we're working on, it's actually really hard, even though people look at it on the front from the front end and go, wow, that looks really easy. But behind the scenes, there's actually quite a bit of complexity that we have to like manage and sort through. 
Yeah, totally. I mean, I've, I've always been pretty obsessed with the network effect. And I think it's an incredible way to really reach, you know, a larger universe and widen your data reach. It's incredible. And uh, the amplification part, of course, is integral. I, I, you recently showed me something I thought was amazing where Clipper, where you index it, and then you can do the emoji so you know people are getting that sort of engagement as well and then you can share that particular part of the video through i know you're partnering with snowball through through snowball and then out through the network so i think that's incredible because it really keeps the content alive at the event after the event and i think it would really help build this this 365 community um, and also i think add value to the community um, which of course is going to keep people more engaged isn't it so i think that's really interesting and i think that leads a little bit to this whole netflixization you know of content that we're sort of seeing in the events industry you can sort of see it can't you there like you watch this now you should watch this you know and using ai to match that and i think that that's a really clever way to keep engagement too and i think clipper could really really play with that i mean what are your thoughts around the netflixization of of content currently yeah well i mean that's part of the reason we have like our zoom and and teams and and google meet and um you know, coming soon, Dropbox and Box integrations, because um, we're actually thinking about the Netflixization of everyday video. And so if we can make everyday video bingeable, um, that's like mission accomplished, right? Because like right now, uh, Netflix will recommend, you know, another show based on a show or a series that you watched. And then now it's like in your own company, if you're watching content and then, we can recommend other things from other departments inside the company. It becomes one of those things where, well, well, did you know that this would actually be relevant to, to you as well? Um, and then that's in, in the enterprise context, but then in the events context, if you are focused on blockchain or if you're focused on you know, machine learning, you can learn about all these other things that other people are actually watching and we can actually recommend that as well. And so for us, the engagement ends up being the fuel to actually highlight popularity and the popularity increases the relevance. And so there's this really positive like virtuous cycle where we can recommend across all this video content, across all the different like verticals. Um, and so, you know, it, you know, making us, making this everyday video more snackable and more bingeable, it, it's actually one of our missions. Um, and so, you know, so, so Netflix is, is really kind of like, a, you know, it's like a, a guiding star for, for, for us on this front. <laughs> That's amazing. And, and that sort of leads on, I guess, to um, analytics. You know, Netflix, of course, you use analytics to make sure that uh, the user journey is really tailored and personalized. And uh, personalization, as we know, in the events world, particularly for audiences, is so important to creating engagement. So how, how could Clipper be used to create a more personalized user journey, more personalized customer journey? And, you know, what are the core analytics do you think that it really brings? Yeah, so for us on the personalization front, there's a couple of dynamics. Um, one is imagine when you sign up for a conference and you highlight your specific areas of interest. Normally what happens is you end up getting spammed by vendors who are servicing that category. Imagine now for event platforms or event organizers being able to share a personalized highlight reel around the exact interests around the moments in the conference that actually were relevant to their interests. And so now highlight reels of those video moments could actually be done in an automated way that would allow those end users to like get a personalized summary of the conference. That's one way we can personalize. Another personalization dimension is when you look at an individual session, and let's say it's a one hour or two hour you know, session, if you only want to look for certain things, you could actually, because Clipper generates an automated table of contents, you could pick and choose the sections of the, of the, of the session that you want to watch and basically watch just the sections that are most relevant to you or you know skim through it and get a quick summary of the actual session itself and so when you end up personalizing we remember those things and you go back and, and then if you're curating it for your whole department or for your whole company you can actually share that personalized highlight reel to the rest of your company so that they get all the benefits of your time being spent at, at a conference um, and so for us, personalization is all about relevance. And so we're, we're trying to provide as many tools as possible for 
the individual to watch just what they need, but also to allow their peers and their community to also personalize. Uh, and so all of those things end up being things that we end up learning about so that we can improve uh, the topics automation that we generate. And even though we started off with identifying um, you know, topics, we are, we're already identified other types of moments that people value. And all of those are actually, um, you know, customer moments, you know, key customer positive moments, you know, uh, higher and no higher moments. These are all kinds of moments that you can kind of see beyond that are also really relevant to people. And we're working on um, identifying those as well. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. And, and, you know, so important, you know, to anyone involved in an event, if they're going to keep enhancing their event, it's so important. So you know, this all sounds amazing. So someone watching this, I guess, is either from an event tech perspective or an event organizer perspective. So I'll start with the first question is how actually, you know, is it, is it quite easy for an event organizer now to integrate Clipper to their website, for example? Talk us through. Yeah. So couple of ways that we, we do this. Um, the most simplest way is by using the Clipper player and embedding it in as an iframe. So when you create a Clipper account, you can start uploading your video directly into Clipper using our various ingestion tools or dragging and dropping the MP4 file. Um, when you end up creating the video um, and then you make it public, uh, which means you're, you're comfortable with, with sharing it widely, then we'll actually have a little embed icon, which will give you the iframe uh, code where you can then embed it directly into, into, uh, into your website. So that's, that's one example, but we, are, we have also prioritized a Wix widget, other tools that, uh, as well as on a WordPress tool that will allow for easier integration within the respective uh, website app stores. Uh, so that's one way, but another way that we've been, you know, focused on getting Clipper everywhere is by powering event platforms. And so a lot of our biggest customers have been telling the major um, event platforms like Grip, like Visibo, like Hopin, like they're asking them, you know, Hubelo, Swapcard, each of them to all like natively integrate Clipper so that Clipper is a feature of, of their platform so that when they run the event, it automatically has been clippered. Uh, and so that way, that's the lowest friction when we already are part of the platform that they're using. Um, but then we also realize that, you know, there are people who want to um, run events and, and do it their own way. And so the long tail uh, we support, um, and if there's specific things that we need to add, um, we'll, we're happy to add it. Um, and uh, in the meantime, it's, it's really kind of both places, clipper embedded, uh, and then, you know, Clipper uh, for, for everyone. <laughs> That's amazing. So, you know, an event organizer watching this, an event tech platform watching this, you know, Clipper can, can integrate with and work with you. And it's easy, right? So it's easy to do and lots of support, of course, from the team as always. Um, and aren't you integrated now with Zoom and Microsoft Teams and, you know, True and also like, what else is on the roadmap? Yeah, so um, right now we have a, a Zoom integration, we have a Google Drive integration, we have a Microsoft OneDrive integration. Um, we're actually getting ready to, to launch the Microsoft Teams integration with Clipper. And so that's a situation where rather than expecting people to go to clipper.ai, uh, we're actually powering Microsoft Teams. And so for anybody who's using Microsoft Teams, we're behind the scenes and we're a feature uh, of Microsoft Teams. And so that allows anybody to pull in their video that they just recorded, uh, have it, you know, get, you know, get, have it get, have it clippered uh, and then immediately available. Uh, and then they can kind of create different groups and different departments within a company. And this new freemium program, we're actually gonna allow all companies to use Clipper for free for all hands meetings up to four hours uh, a month and 50 hours of history. And so that means that you can start, any company can get started with Clipper um, on us for, for the all hands use case. And even though right now, the first deepest ex experience is actually happening with Microsoft Teams, we will also have that for, for Zoom and for Google Workspace customers as well. The tools already exist to do it. Um, 
it's a little extra work, but you know, it, it's already it's already possible to go there and, and support it and, and, and start using. So that's actually coming uh, down the pike. Another thing that's worth highlighting uh, for Clipper is that we now also have um, StreamYard integration and the real-time support. And so one way to think about Clipper is, I had highlighted before that people thought about Clipper as the post event masters. And now when we actually kind of have carried over into the real-time world, we now actually support RTMP streams. And so that means that Clipper can receive the RTMP stream through StreamYard, through Vonage, through Restreams, um, YouTube Live. And then as soon as Clipper receives it, we come back and give you the enriched version. Um, and so that way it actually means that instead of having to record the video, upload the video, and then have Clipper enrich it, you can actually just stream it to Clipper and then we've enriched it. So we, we cut out the whole uploading step because we're going to receive it in real time. And so, um, so, so really this new Clipper player for the synchronous theater and then the asynchronous theater is actually a really powerful concept because it can be streamed. And then as soon as the event is finished, we flip the switch and then Clipper hydrates the topics and all the engagement that occurred during the live event can now show up in the uh, post event version and now people can collaborate they can skip they can bookmark they can watch but during the live one you know we call it simul live people can only react to the video um, because we do want to leverage that captive audience but that engagement is really valuable insight for us in the post event version of the player yeah wow i mean that's that's incredible i mean do you know what I love as well about Clipper is obviously it's amazing for events and on-demand content and building communities. But, you know, I'm thinking back to all my old companies as well. It would have been really useful day-to-day, -day, you know, just in a day-to-day -day enterprise uh, and also um, for ed education for universities and so on. So I think, you know, they're fantastic ways as well. Um, and it's great because you also integrate with YouTube. So, you know, I think that's great, too. So it's exciting, you know, how quickly it's all happened. And, um, you know, being from the events world myself um, and knowing over the years how I would have loved to have had this insight, particularly around um, my future content, what sessions would I put on, um, you know, and also what are my customers you know, saying to each other and behaving? I, I think it's so important. So it's fascinating to to hear it all from from the horse's mouth from you today. Um, <laughs> I hope everyone has enjoyed watching this as much as I have enjoyed, uh, you know, being involved in this interview, fireside chat with you, Humphrey, um, and thanks for your time. Yes, thanks so much. Uh, this was really a lot of fun, and uh, we'll see everybody um, out, at, out at the in-person event. <laughs> <laughs> Look forward to seeing you there. All right, take care. See you later. Super stuff. Thank you very much to Humphrey Chen there and Sophie Ahmed.